Hey guys, want to go ahead and set up the nine weeks project since I couldn't get it in class. This will also be helpful for anybody who, you know, wasn't there the day that I went through it anyway. Your first nine weeks project. What the setup is, you are a concerned citizen about a super fun site in your community. What's a super fun site? Well, according to the Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act, CERCLA, or better known as Superfund, these are hazardous waste sites in local communities, cities unfortunately all across America. Or you're going to research one in Florida and you're going to create a PowerPoint presentation to convince me, Mr. Mayor, not your teacher, Mr. Mayor, to spend taxpayers dollars to clean up this site. So you need to know how to get to it. I'm going to go ahead and pull everything up here so you can kind of slow it down, pause it, stop, anything you need to see how to find a super fun site and how to use the rubric and the documents in there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the computer screen. So here we go. First nine weeks project background gives that same information, talks about the CERCLA Act, when it was established, everything else. You got your procedures using the internet, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You have your rubric up there. Now, your project has got to include a title slide, including your name. So, you know, ABC Chemical Company by John D. Pettit, whatever the case may be. You have to have five contaminants within your site. You find a site with three contaminants, can you use it? No, you can't. It's got to have five contaminants. Also, this is risk to humans. You're asking me, Mr. Mayor, to spend taxpayers' dollars on cleaning up a Superfund site? Guys, nobody wants to spend money on a hazardous waste site. I want to spend money on a new school. I want to spend money on a road. I want to spend money on a park. That gives me political clout. For me to be willing to spend money on a Superfund site, a hazardous waste site, well, there's got to be good reason. I got to be convinced I'm saving taxpayers' lives. I'm cleaning up the area. I've got to put this in a good spin. So you need to create a presentation to motivate me to spend the taxpayers' monies on cleaning up this site. That's the goal. That's the job. Now you can pick any site in Florida except coppers. You are not allowed to pick the one super fun site here in Gainesville, Florida. You can pick out of any other place in Florida, and unfortunately, there's a bunch on the list. So, let's go ahead and kind of look at the rubric real shortly, and then a little bit of the nitty gritty of how to get to a super fun site. Use of graphics. I expect some graphics to be there, right? I mean, you know, I want to have some pictures. You've got to wow and dazzle me. Content accuracy. Uh, this stuff needs to be accurate. You can't tell me that your contaminant causes brain damage when it all it does is cause minor rashes. It needs to be accurate. Sequence of information, as long as you follow, kind of have it up, your title slide, your five contaminants, the specific risk to human, you should be fine. But I do want to see you in this project, right? I want to see some of your creativity, some of what makes you you in the project. So we want to see some of that in your sequencing of events, how you may put that together. Please, text, font, color, formatting, all of that stuff, it has got to be professional. No bright green backgrounds with super highlighted pink text and dancing unicorns prancing across it. All right, it's a professional presentation. I do want to see some of you in there, but it needs to be professional. So that's what we mean by text, font, color formatting, etc. And then originality. Once again, if I get two projects that are exactly the same, I tell you what, I'll split the score between you and the other person that magically created the exact same PowerPoint. Even if two people have the same company, sure that can happen, your presentations are going to be different. So your originality, I want to see that in there. These are due when I stated don't want to say here because from year to year obviously that might change projects have to be done on that day now let's take a look here so you have this document right here 
the list of Superfund sites. Well, right here I have provided the link for you. So click on the link and once I do, you're going to go to the health and environment. We'll take a look. Then you're going to go to the contaminant information and ultimately view a full list of contaminants. So here we go. All I got to do is click on my link and boom, they pop up right there. List of Superfund sites in Florida. I click on this and here we are scrolling right down here. Now, once again, these are all and I have pages and pages and pages. Pick one that interests you. I'm simply going to take the very top one just out of sheer random chance, right? So I'm going to click on this one. Brings up that information. Like I said, over here on the left, you want to go to this health and environment. I'm going to click on health and environment. Then I'm going to go right beside it and I'm going to click on just like in the piece of paper shows the contaminant information. Now mine are in purple because I've already clicked them. Obviously they'll all be blue for you first time. So contaminant information and it just takes me to the top of that page. They're right here. View a full list of contaminants of concern for this site. That's where you're going to find the information. I click on that. Now you can see it right down at the bottom of the page but I got to scroll down and here they are. I have arsenic, chloride, fluoride, lead, nitrate, nitrites, radium, and sulfates. And I need to find out what they're doing. Now you notice arsenic is listed twice because it's possibly getting in the groundwater as well as soil, but it's not in an aerosol format. So it's not in some form we're going to breathe in. It's in the ground and in the water. This is where it comes to the particular hazards at this site. Here we don't really have it in a vapor form. So if breathing it in is an issue, that's not a particular trouble here. Anyway, I have arsenic, chloride, fluoride, lead, nitrates, radium, and sulfate. So I have seven. I need to have five contaminants that are specific risk to humans. Fluoride, I'm probably not going to highlight that one because we put it in a water to help our teeth get clean. That's probably not going to catch me, Mr. Mayor, all that excited about getting rid of the fluoride. It could be, it is a hazard, but you need to look up and make decisions. Same with nitrites, nitrates. We put these in our fertilizer. They're all over the place. Not that they can't cause problems, but once again, we're looking specifically hazards to human. Now, radium-226, eh, I know off the top of my head, that's going to be radioactive. Lead poisoning, that's been a big issue arsenic you know so I have some good choices here now what do you do for that I'll be honest with you I'm just gonna go up here and type in what are the hazards of arsenic in a Google search and ta-da harmful to the eye skin liver kidneys lungs lymphatic system exposure to arsenic can also cause cancer woohoo I have my first contaminant that's actually a risk to humans now I can begin my PowerPoint presentation. Most of you should be solid on doing a slides or PowerPoint. Doesn't matter me to which one it is. You're going to have a title slide, five contaminant slides, one or two slides about specific hazards to human there at that site. That's going to mirror, if you will, what's happening you know what the contaminant is but once again arsenic at my site is not going to be getting in the lungs so I don't want to include that in the slide of hazards to humans here and I want a couple of slides about cleanup what do we do to make this site safe guys it's got to be doable let's dig up all the dirt and shoot it to the Sun well, although that might fix it we don't have a trillion dollars in taxpayers budget to do this. It's not reasonable. It's not feasible. You need to come up with ideas that we can actually clean it up. If you're still curious about, you know, ideas, how do we do that? Give me a slide on short-term clean up. What do we need to do right now to keep this safe? And give me long-term. What is it going to take in the next 10 years to actually have the site safe for people to be able to build homes on again? What have you? Well, that should take you through it how to go to it, how to get to the sites, how to find the contaminants, 
how to look them up. The rest of it, that's why it's a project. Research on your part about cleanup, about the hazards themselves, and which ones you gotta pick. Guys, get at it. You got kind of a long weekend. Take care of it. Get it done before it's due. Take care, guys.